Well, hello again, and this is now part eight of Object-Oriented Programming Introduction. I hope you enjoyed parts one through seven. Yes, I understand that the first program is quite difficult. Um, that is on purpose. Hello world is just ridiculously simple, and it's not even object-oriented. So let's dive right in. Let's review the first program. It probably took you a little while since they're all new concepts. The output should look like what you see here on the screen. The terminal velocity is 28.3 meters per second. Notice that the output is not very pretty, but it does get the job done. Note that the tuple is enclosed in parentheses. As a reminder, a tuple is like a, uh, like a quintuple or sextuple or triplets or twins. They're essentially items that are never going to change. You know, a set of twins will always be a set of twins. They won't suddenly magically become triplets. We are shown the units because 28.3 by itself is not really an answer. You need to know if that's meters per second, miles per hour, kph, knots, whatever. As a side note, a coefficient of drag of 3.0 would be ridiculously rare. Um, a half circle parachute is only 1.5. Okay, moving along. More concepts and terminology. Let's add to our first program. Let's make a class just for parachutes, which is going to inherit from our physics stuff class. Let's make a loop for parachutes from 10 to 100 centimeters in diameter. This is going to force you to use the for command. Let's convert from centimeter to inches for those that don't understand centimeters. And let's make the output easier to read. So we're going to learn something called string formatting. Let's make a new module and a new class. And yep, I'm sticking as creatively with the other names. So let's make this one called parachute underscore stuff. The coefficient of drag of a hemispherical parachute, you know, a half circle is less than or equal to 1.5. Let's assume 1.5. For those of you that are worried about units, coefficient of drag is a characteristic that does not have units. It's actually a ratio. Now the frontal area of a hemisphere, if I give you a diameter, is pi d squared divided by four. That's very similar to pi r squared. Nothing should be a surprise there. So let's look at string formatting. String formatting uses a method called format. This is different than concatenation. Concatenation is when you place two or more strings together without any additional processing. So as the example there, if you had string A, hello, and string B, there, and you put them together, A plus B, you would get hello there without a space because a space is obviously another character. So that's a bummer. And with concatenation, you start making these gigantically long expressions with all these pluses, and it just becomes ugly. So the format method, it was invented for that. If you've ever taken C or C++ or C Sharp, you might recognize STRFMT. In any case, these two links will give you um, a lot more information. Technically, it's a method of string, which is an object which makes it an attribute. And because it's an attribute, it means you put the object, then a dot, then the method name. So if you had a string called a underscore string, in order to invoke it, you would put a underscore string dot format. Okay, that makes sense, because it's an attribute. Format does so many, many, many things that it's gonna take you a long time to understand them all. I've done this for years and I still don't memorize them all. So look at the examples that I'm going to show you here and then refer to the documentation, okay? The examples here from the first one shows you a thing, a string that has these curly braces, then a colon, then a comma, then a period, then a zero, then an F, okay? It's a little mini language, if you were. The curly brackets tells the format 
procedure, I'm sorry, format method, that it should stick something in those curly brackets, okay? What is it gonna stick in there? Well, in the parentheses, you're going to list all of the variables that you want replaced. The colon inside the curly brackets tells it, hey, I want some special formatting. The little comma says separate the numbers as we do in the United States where thousands and millions and billions and so on are separated by commas. The period says it's a, I'm going to designate how many decimal points I want. And then zero means I don't want any decimal points. The F means expect a floating point number. In other words, a float, a number that has, you know, a decimal uh, fractional part. So it does all of those things. Now let's look at another example in there. Let's look at near the bottom. You have curly brackets. Again, that tells me that we're going to replace something in here. Something is going inside those curly brackets in the you know final output. The colon says, hey, I'm giving you some instructions, and then you'll see it's just a 20. Well, that, what that means is I want 20 spaces for that variable. So that variable, no matter how long it is, is going to take up at least 20 spaces. Next to it, you have one that has curly bracket, which means please put something inside these curly brackets. Colon, hey, listen up, I've got some instructions for you. Then you've got the greater than sign which points to the right well that means right justify then it has a 6.2 that says use six spaces use a decimal and give me two digits after the decimal point then you'll see a percent that means treat that number like a percent so in other words 0.53 will be shown as 53 percent Again, look at all these examples. You might want to take some time to look at the screen because it shows you some of the standard um, formatting things that you're going to use a lot of, okay? And remember, the variables inside the parentheses are the things that are going to go in the final product inside the curly brackets. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that format thing. Now we go to optional parameters. Optional parameters is when a method um, takes parameters, and of course a method can take from zero to nearly an infinite number of parameters, but sometimes a parameter is optional because the value is pretty much the same all the time. Um, so what we do is we initialize the value inside the definition of the method. So if we look at the horse hand example, we can make the color of the horse optional. If the user doesn't care what color, then we could just maybe pick brown. So if you look there at the screen, you'll see the initialized routine now says self dash color equals brown. So if the user does not specify a color, we'll simply have a horse hand that's brown. Okay, and more information there at that link at the bottom of the screen. Let's start with our second program. Let's review the needs of the second program. We're gonna make a class just for parachutes. We're gonna inherit from physics stuff. We're gonna call it parachute stuff in a new module called parachute stuff. We're gonna make a loop that's gonna go from 10 to 100 centimeters in diameter. We're gonna convert centimeters to inches in the output. We wanna make the output easier to read. So give you an example there of how to do it. We're going to assume 1.5 for the coefficient of drag. The area of a circle is there. And then we want to overload the physics stuff dot terminal velocity method. And we want to make the CD parameter optional. Now have fun with this, don't get frustrated. The answer is in the next screen. Here it comes. And there is an example code which you can download from the uh, 
shared folder. This class inherits, creates a new class and a new computer file. The third parameter of the overloaded method has been replaced by an optional parameter. How do I know that? Because now it says para underscore cd equals zero. There is a new method strictly for hemispherical shoots, but realize or note that it doesn't use any new code. It just uses the existing code. And then there is a loop that uses the range function and the strings are formatted to look prettier. The next screen is what the output should look like. Here we go. And that's what the output should look like for that sample program. Okay, again, don't get frustrated. Um, these are all new concepts and it should be difficult, but that's why I already gave you the answer and you can download them. Okay, enjoy.